Alright, I said I wasn't gonna do it, but I did it. That's, that's a lie, I did it. Uh, I got so much film. Alright, so let me give you guys the background real quick. I was browsing the photo video section of Craigslist, as I usually do, uh, just seeing kind of what's going on there. And I came across this a lot of some darkroom materials for 45 bucks. And it had this Patterson tank, which has two 35 millimeter stainless steel spools in it, plus a single 120 spool, as well as a changing bag for $45. And there was a bunch of other stuff in there too. And I thought to myself, well, you know, this stuff on its own is usually more than $45, so I should just check it out and uh, see what's up. Fast forward a couple of days, and I go up to meet up with them, buy all the stuff, and here's what I got. I did get the spools and all that, and I also got a few extras. First of all, I got a bunch of archiving sleeves, which is just convenient to have. Uh, we have 8x10, which I will probably never use, but also plenty of medium format and 35mm ones as well. I also got this big thing of Ilford photo paper. I don't know how to use this yet. I've never used it in a larger, but I'll get there eventually. And then this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Let me show you. So in addition to the Patterson tank, the spools, and the dark bag, and the paper that I knew I was getting, I also got all of this film. So let's break down what I got. Now I do want to start this by mentioning that every roll of film that I got is expired by probably 10 years, uh, some more, some closer to 15. And I have to assume that it was just stored terribly. Got two rolls of Tri-X 400, two rolls of the Ilford XB2 400, one roll of T-Max 100, some Italian film that I've ever heard of that has like six results on Lomography, some Neopan 400, Kodak Gold 200 in here, and then, oh, Fomapan Action 400, which I am yet to look into at all. So that's all the 35mm film. Not bad, nothing crazy going on here, but uh, definitely a lot of black and white film that I'm excited to shoot, and then I can develop it myself and scan it myself. Then we get onto the medium format 120 film, and this is a little bit sad because I don't own a medium format camera. I have no means of shooting any of this, uh, which is a little bit of a bummer, and has me genuinely tempted to buy a medium format camera, but I shouldn't do that. Anyways, we got a lot of goodies in here. We got four rolls of Tri-X 400 for 120. We got a roll of Portra 400, two rolls of Ektar 100, and there's also one more that I don't know what it is. <laughs> a lot of good Kodak film in here. Uh, again, everything was $45. This is the Craigslist steal of a lifetime. And this was the Craigslist steal of a lifetime before I even get into the next thing, which is the craziest by far. And that is five packs of Fujifilm FP100C. So yeah, in there, there was five packs of Fuji FP100C and one pack of Fuji FP100B. Now, like everything else, the caveat is that this is very expired and they're not stored well. If I can show you real quick, most of them are stored something like this. So I don't know what that means. Like, I don't know if this is how sealed this is or what. If you don't know, which I did not know prior to about two hours ago, this stuff is very expensive. A pack of this stuff goes for around $100 on eBay. Granted, I think that might be stored a little better or something like that. At the very least, these two boxes are stored correctly. Uh, the rest of them, not so much, but I don't even know if that matters because this stuff seems to be pretty dang rare. So yeah, um, this, this is wild to me. This is so, like, you know how people say they go into a thrift store and they buy a film camera for five bucks or whatever? This feels like that. Like I paid 45 bucks for this on Craigslist and this is a lot of good stuff. So I didn't have a video planned for this. This was just a thing that happened. And once I unpackaged everything, I realized that it was too good not to share. So I'm just gonna sit on this for a few days, think about it, and you guys will get to pick up where I am leaving off. The only place to go from here was out onto the streets to test this film and see what I'm working with. 
I got two rolls of Tri-X on 35mm, so I figured I'd start there. I loaded up my camera and got moving towards Central Park. With all this film being expired, I followed the one decade equals one stop guideline, shooting the whole roll at 200 ISO. After burning through that roll, it was time to try my hand at developing. I never developed before, I never took a photography course or anything like that, so I was going into this process with only what I learned from YouTube. I had a pretty hard time finding information about developing Kodak film in Ilford chemistry, especially since the box of Triax has a link for a webpage that no longer exists. But thankfully there were some data sheets compiled online to reference. I was nervous about ruining my film, even though it was just a test roll, so I wrote down every step, every piece of equipment I needed. It all felt very dated in the best way possible, like I was stepping back in time in a way. After one minor meltdown, I was able to move through development without much issue, though I did lose 8 shots because I couldn't load the film spool correctly. It's a unique feeling to bring those images to life and see them in person rather than just framed up in a viewfinder. I lost my, uh, I didn't lose it. My light just stopped working. Anyways, so right now I don't have the tools for any sort of good scans, but I did want to see what my negatives looked like, so I decided to just take regular pictures of them and punch in and put those 33 megapixels from the Sony a7 IV to work. This is a perfect example of photography being very personal. These images aren't good, the negatives aren't good, the scans aren't really good either, but they mean a lot to me because it's my first time doing it and I did the whole process from start to finish of really bringing those pictures to life. And even though I did do stuff wrong, the fact that it worked at all is a reflection of all the things that I did right as well. I'm also a little sentimental about the idea of getting some stuff that someone no longer uses and bringing new life to it. That's just cool to me. So anyways, that's all sweet, but why make this video? And I think what's really kind of on top of my mind is the fact that this changes things a decent bit for me in the sense that I don't have to pay to develop black and white film for the foreseeable future, and I now have a small stockpile of black and white film. So I can shoot black and white film for essentially free for probably the next six months or so. Uh, I don't shoot that much film, honestly. And then color film, I just need to pay to get developed, and I can do the scans myself uh, once I get the right equipment for that so I think this does directly save me a decent bit of money to continue shooting film which is really cool. I'm also really excited to be getting more into the development process because I've spent the past couple months really learning a lot about analog photography and the whole process from start to finish and this is just an extension of that. I'm looking forward to experimenting more, looking forward to optimizing more and just learning everything that I can so that I can be a better photographer uh, in both analog and digital. I think it really does open up a certain amount of growth potential that I don't think I would see by just using a lab every time. And as for the rest of the film, I'm really not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I think I'd like to sell some, just to get my money back at least, and then maybe give some away because 
the more that I've looked at that film, uh, being a discontinued film stock, there's some passionate film pack shooters out there who don't have access to that film, and I think I could be, uh, I think I could be nice enough to just give some away and give people the joy of experiencing using that film stock, using that pack film, because that's definitely a unique experience, and at around $100 a pack, it's not so easy to come by, so I might just give some away to internet strangers, and maybe some strangers here in New York that want to shoot pack film, but I don't know. So if you're an active pack film shooter, uh, be sure to let me know in the comments, because maybe I'll hook you up. Anyways, that's a wrap on this video. Maybe in the next one you'll actually get to see some decent photos, but don't fucking count on it. Because uh, I guess that's just not what I do here. Till next time.